What's up? The Ron here and today we're gonna paint this tea bag. And can you guess what we'll be using to paint this tea bag? You guessed it. Tea. Let's get started. Okay, so here is the drawing stage. Uh, this is fairly quick and a fairly simple drawing. It's an inanimate object. Uh, so you can mess up the shape here and there and it'll still be fine. It was important for me to put the table behind it so that we have this nice negative shape around the tea bag with a darker background. Here I go with the first uh, tea layer and it's a smiling smiley because I was happy and jolly at this stage and I was like, cool, I'm painting with tea. But the main thing you'll see here is that I had a really hard time getting darker values with it. So the first wash, that's fair enough. I knew it's gonna be fair fairly light and I probably should have mixed a little more tea uh, but it still just wasn't dark enough for me and it really forced me to try and work with glazes so here my smiley is kind of midway it's not really happy it's not really sad it's just out there and as you can see this doesn't change much I just add another glaze uh, and it makes things very gently very slightly uh, darker but still not enough uh, now then I did, I went ahead and did another wash, I'm just going over the shadows, uh, dabbed some part that I messed up that you can barely see. Now here I was a, a bit angry, this was either the third or fourth, I think I cut one in editing, uh, because things just weren't getting darker. But I did have fun with it, um, to some degree it was nice doing something a little different, and I got a nice little underpainting going. So then I decided, okay, now I'm gonna switch over to uh, watercolor and treat this first layer as just an underpainting. So I'm starting with French Ultramarine. I decided to use French Ultramarine because it seemed to work nicely with the yellowy uh, color of the tea. Uh, kind of reminded me of raw sienna and I know it works really well with French Ultramarine. So I was like, let's go for it. Uh, and it ended up working very nicely. I didn't use a wet enough of a wash, so it's a bit uneven, but that's fine. In the grand scheme of things, it will uh, end up looking like a nice little tea bag. And now I'm starting to use that raw sienna I talked to you about, mixed with just a bit of French ultramarine. Notice how easily I can define the shadows, finally, because I have a paint that can get dark much more easily. So this really puts things in perspective, because even the yellow that isn't too dark is much darker than the tea bag. I actually used three tea bags in just one small half cup size and it still uh, wasn't dark enough. So I could have probably used a darker tea. Uh, I do want to try this out with coffee as well and see if I get a bit of a better result. Uh, now I'm uh, exploiting wet and wet to get the very dark shadows on the right side of the tea bag. And once I get those in, the one thing that's left is the, the reflection and the cast shadows. So for those, I'm gonna use a bit of a lighter paint here and then I'm gonna smear it around with some water so that it doesn't get too dark. And here you can see this, I'm just moving it around with the water. Uh, there isn't a lot to do, so I'm just gonna blend these shadows in, then work on some additional uh, shadows. Also, we have the shadow on the left under the tea bag label. So that's gonna happen in just one moment. But here you can see I need to charge more and more and more to get it really dark. You wanna get the right contrast. And here it was almost, I wouldn't say it was almost black, but it was really, really dark. Now I'm moving on to the label. And we're almost done here. I'm gonna add this string. And then I'm gonna do some stuff off camera and talk about it in just a moment. So here it is, the final result in its full glory. And uh, as you've seen at some point, I gave up uh, and added watercolor to the mix. It was just impossible, it took so many glazes. Uh, now I also used this uh, white uniball Signo pen, Signo, I don't know what you'd call that, to get some highlights here uh, on the string. And I also used just a bit of the the new Indigraph pen I got uh, to add some details. I actually, in another experiment with the colors, I used it fully with uh, the watercolor and it works wonderfully together. It's um, The ink is waterproof and the pen is good for waterproof ink, so that's just side note. And with that being said, we can wrap up this video. So this is it for uh, this video. And as you've seen, using a different medium, for me in this case, tea, forces you to think differently and maybe approach it a little differently. I found it highly frustrating having to do tons of glazes, so I know that style is not for me, 
but doing this forced me to at least give it some thought because in the past, as much as I tried to do the whole tea consistency with my watercolors and to build them up with multiple glazes, I failed. I mentally could barely do that. The tea forced me to do that. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're not sure how to continue with your medium, perhaps it would be a good idea to stop, try out a different one just once and see what kind of insights it awakens in you, okay? So I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you have, don't forget to give it a like and also subscribe. I have tons of processes like this one, more detailed, less detailed, tons of series, painting masters, the paint show, everything. So I'll be happy to have you on board. Thank you so much and I will see you again in another vid real soon.